Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Progressive Overload Podcast. Have you ever thought about strengthening multiple areas of your life at the same time? Then you've come to the right place. Our goal is to help you identify ways that you might need a progressive overload to break through those plateaus and keep you growing. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Progressive Overload Podcast. This is Joe Copeland, and I'm sitting here right next to Adam Lazarine and up? Dustin Moore. Yo. Guys, I have a confession to make. I am a mama's boy. Okay. And glad you are. I will be calling my mom mommy until um is probably socially accept over the the threshold that is so socially acceptable. <laughs> mm-hmm. How old are you? And I am thirty. Mm-hmm. I love my okay. mama so much, and that's what I wanted to talk about today. We are just coming off of um, Mother's Day weekend, and so I th- really thought it would be a great idea to. Um, record this podcast talking about uh, our appreciation for mothers and what they do and and then also just some quick uh tips on how moms can prioritize their health um and so yeah what do y'all think about that um so you're saying you're 360 months 300 what oh <laughs> three, 30 years that flew over his head <laughs> so <laughs> quick dude well you oh, know when you man. think about mothers you think about them taking that's care of their uh, kids and yeah. you know how old are they and you're like they're 18 months you know like joe is 360 half. months they're like for 30 <laughs> months <laughs> would someone ask my mom how old i am that's yeah. what she says yeah <laughs> that's awesome so uh, you know shout out to moms dude they're they're our biggest support they're our biggest fans um, and not even just our moms. Like, we're surrounded, especially like Adam. I'm sure you have a whole congregation full of moms that, I, that look out course. for you. I do. Right? Yes. Yes, sir. I have a wonderful uh, group of, of people that I that do the things that mothers do. Yeah. You yeah. Know? yeah. yeah. And that's kind of what we're going to talk about today. That's, that's awesome. You know, especially coming from myself, uh, who that is mom to me yeah like sure. period yeah. Sure. and and so you know you can't let those those go by without being mm-hmm. recognized either of course so shout out to all the the moms or the in quotations the mom moms, figures the mom figures who are in our and others lives of course yeah yeah doing what they do did y'all have a big mother's day weekend uh we did at, well i mean we celebrated at the church mm-hmm. um it's difficult for me to go and see my mother on mother's day every year well, because yeah. <laughs> you know it's a work day it's a work day yeah. yeah um but yes i send a message or give a call um, of course and um we communicate that way and yeah. it it goes well and you know they're always appreciative my mom is always appreciative and then of course with the kids you know um with my wife being a mother of to our children, uh, we make sure and honor her in the same, in the same way yep. with gifts and, and doing things Absolutely. special for her mm-hmm. and, uh, making the day special. So yeah. it's always a wonderful time. Yeah. And I think we as men need to make mother's day a daily thing. We need to appreciate them on a much deeper level every single day, not just on, not just one day a year, not just one day a year. And the, cause they deserve that. And, yeah. um, man, mothers are so selfless and that's one of the most, the biggest things that I appreciate about what my mom did for me does for me. And then what, what my wife does mm. for our child. Um, it's, it's like they, they put every need of their own on the back burner and they take care of their kids 24 seven. And it just, it's so much respect. It's hard. I can't, I mean, it's hard to be a dad and I can't imagine it's probably so much harder to be mm-hmm. a mom, especially working moms, you know, but also, I mean, don't get me wrong. Stay at home moms have it way harder than I do on a daily basis. That's for sure. True. Um, you know, shout out to shout out to your wife who has not only your daughter, but you, the grown child of the house <laughs> yes. to deal with on a daily. Yes. Uh, because man, let's be real. Husbands are, are one of the kids too. Absolutely. Right? They yeah. need just as much. Uh, we have our moments oh, where yeah. man. Uh, we just, we need a little extra care. <laughs> um, yeah. And, it and typically involves thinking. Sometimes yes, we yeah. think a little too hard and uh, something right. something goes wrong. I always say the day that I stop laughing at my own farts is the day that I, I'm, I'm done. I don't want to live anymore. Thank you for sharing that. Um, <laughs> okay. Just picture yeah. that on your tombstone. Yeah, the, looking day, forward the date of birth to... <laughs> to the day he stopped. To the day he stopped laughing. Laughing at his yeah. farts. That's okay. exciting. We're looking yeah. forward to 361 yeah. months for you, Joe. <laughs> Thank you for that. Um, yeah. All right. So... 
what do we do with mothers? And typically when I think about mothers in general, and I, and I always kind of lend itself to this for me, it's about people that have influenced. It's people that support. It's people that, yeah. you know, do the nurturing. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. and that's a, a, a good word for mm-hmm. mothers because they yes. are built to do something that yeah. nobody else on the planet yeah. can do. It's innate. Yes. And, um, so what do we tell them, um, outside of the appreciation? Do we have, is there, is there certain fitness, uh, things for mothers alone? Um, or just self care things for mothers in general? I mean, these tips, I want to talk about a few tips for moms to help them get, uh, kind of back to where they're prioritizing their health. You know, they spend so much time of the day taking care of other kids. And so I want to give a few tips and tidbits of of how you can put some energy into focusing on your health Um, because I mean face it you probably aren't doing that very much and if so you need to be so the first one is I love to tell this to moms of all ages whether they're moms or grandmas or just somebody who's who takes care of other people that has a hard time taking care of themselves and it's be selfish. That's, that's like tab, it's kind of taboo to think about because they spend, it's innate in them. Like you just said that to be self, to be selfless, like mm-hmm. they, they are innate. Um, they're bred and born to take care of others. Um, but you have to be selfish with, with, uh, some time of your day. And so, um, I love to say this because you have to take time for yourself or you will drown. Sure. Yeah. I think it's one of those things where I'm sitting here looking at three of us and none of us are mothers. No. <laughs> and so we are the least qualified people in the world to talk about right. how it feels Absolutely. to be a mother. Um, but if you're, if you're listening, I, I know what Joe is getting at because in those moments and, and particularly for us three, our jobs even do this mm-hmm. to a certain degree. Our jobs are caring for the needs of other people. Mm-hmm. you know, in so many different ways. Yeah. Um, and so for us to, to even take a moment to ourself feels wrong. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Is that, is that fair? Yeah. yeah. And so for mothers, it's even that in, in an exponential factor. I can get that. For um, sure. Yeah. To just sit and go, I need to take a breath for me. Yes. It, yeah. And it feels so wrong and so backward and so, um, out of the norm, mm-hmm. but that's what we're asking you to do. Yeah. Because it's inc- it's critical to your health. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I I think it comes back to just the general concept of of if you think of them in context of being giving of being a giver, right? And, and picture like picture a teapot. Okay, um, that teapot is only so full. Yeah. And the more that it pours out, the emptier it gets. Mm-hmm. But in order for it to continue to do what it's intended to do, it has to be refilled. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And I, I think that this idea of us uh, of us telling them, you know, be selfish, focus on on loving yourself, on on caring for yourself, on pouring into yourself, is is kind of where, what we're communicating is is yeah. make sure that you are refilled. Mm-hmm. You know, you're eventually the teapot runs dry. Yeah. And, and you can't let yourself get to that point. And I think yeah. that's what Adam was hinting at mm-hmm. when, when you talked about us and our jobs and our caring for people is yeah. it feels backwards to, to stop doing what we're doing because that's what we're intended to do. Right. But at the same time, in order for us to continue to function in, in what I almost want to use the word optimal, in an optimal capacity yeah. in that, we have to make sure that we are filled. Yeah. Right. Can't pour from an empty cup. Right. Oh, it's the, it's the same thing with the airplane. When you, when you get the instructions on the airplane, mm-hmm. um, if you go through something that requires the mask to be put on, what do they always tell you? Do you know, uh, do you know, know what I'm talking about? Yeah. So the, oh, the, the, mask, the oxygen mask, oxygen mask yeah, yeah, yeah. comes down out of the ceiling. What do they tell you? Put your mask put on mask. first. Oh, okay. And so because then you can help other people put theirs on. You can help your children. Do not put theirs on first. Put yours on first. Okay. And so. I like that. uh, It's it's another way to look at it. Same concept. Yeah. 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 Especially like you think about that in context of a a family setting. If a family's on an airplane and, and, you know, forbid that something was to happen to where that was necessary. The parental instinct kicks in of of I've got to take care of my kids. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. But. In order for you to best care and see them through it, you have to be okay first. You have to take care of yeah. you. Right. There's this term that's 
I mean, you've probably heard it before. It's mom guilt. And I'd want to tell you moms out there, if you take time for yourself and feel guilt for it, that is from the devil. That is, that is, um, not true. You know, it's, you've, you've spent all this time taking care of yourself taking care of your uh, your kids um do not feel guilty about having setting time aside for yourself my wife gets like this if she uh like we have a daycare at the gym that we go to all the time uh in um uh, wichita and i love it it is a freaking game changer having a place where we can drop off my kid at the gym so uh but my wife had struggled with it because she feels guilty for not spending that time with presley and so I, and I, I, I drove this in her head. This is time for you. And it makes, it makes the time that you do spend with her better and you more quality time mm-hmm. because you're feeling better about yourself. You're feeling more energized. You're feeling uh, more confident and that allows you to be a better mom in those moments. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Um, so what about <clears throat> schedules? I know moms are busy. Um, yeah. And so what do you do for workouts with a busy schedule? Yeah. So there's a couple tips there and I, I like, I like to, to encourage moms to not have the mental, um, thinking that they have to set aside an hour a day to go exercise. Like if that's hard for you say, if you have a newborn who's on a specific schedule, you can't break it out an hour. Um, there is some really cool science that tells us that we can break that hour workout into 10 to 15 minute segments throughout our day and receive the same exact benefits, you know, as mm-hmm. far as strength training, um, you, you know, uh, 60 minutes of straight cardio is obviously different than doing 10 minutes here and 10 minutes there and 10 minutes there. But as far as strength training and building muscle and building strength, you can break those workouts into d- smaller segments throughout the day. And so <clears throat> if you can't break off and have, a child care for 60 minutes or an hour, that same thing. Um, <laughs> then start off in the morning, do 10 to 15 minutes of, of some strength training. Then later in the afternoon, do it again. Then, you know, after dinner, do it again before you go to bed, yeah. do it again. Like it's, it's much easier to do those 10 to 15 minute bouts, um, rather than, um, doing the full 60 minutes. So I love that tip because it seems a lot more doable than having to set yourself apart for 60 minutes. Now, does it have to be strength training when you do it in the, in broken up segments that way, or can you add some cardio in? Oh, you can absolutely add okay. some, add some, you know, cardio weight. If, if you're doing it at home, you know, you can add some, uh, calisthenic type stuff, do some jumping jacks, jump rope burpees if you want. Yeah. You. I will never do a burpee uh, again. I'm, in my I'm life, so about that. <laughs> the burpees. Yeah. Is that when hitting Joe on the back? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. 360 months. Yeah. <laughs> Just burp. Happy 361. I'm sorry. I'll oh get o- I'll get over that eventually. I um, won't. So cardio and strength training um, just cut into 10 to 15 minute bouts during the day. Yeah. It's yep. been still a fantastic way to do uh, your workout for mothers or anyone that's super busy. Yeah, really. Um, anybody can do it. And then these tips are all, obviously we're talking about mothers, but they can be taken for anybody. Um, <clears throat> whenever you're looking moms, if you're looking for a certain program to buy online, I just wanted to make sure that to, for you to be aware of intensity driven workouts. Mm-hmm. So if the workouts are all about go, 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 go intense, 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 it's probably not going to be the best for you, especially if you're um, very newly postpartum. Um, we want to look for programs and exercises that are not draining and exhausting us, but they're supposed to give us strength and energy throughout our day. And so I don't ever leave the gym drained and exhausted. Um, I almost, almost every single workout, I feel more energized. I feel ready to take on the day. Uh, and that's because I'm not focusing on those, uh, intensity driven type, um, workouts. Okay. That's, that makes sense. Um, because that's a, that's a that's a huge selling point for the in, for the industry is let me put all the people working out in a room and, uh-huh. and, and all show the, them working really hard yeah the high and intensity and the sweat and and everything going on this and, could yeah. be you this is going to be you right. that's right. right not could be it's going to be yeah um and then that that really gets us in trouble sometimes yeah so if you're I mean if you had a rough night the baby was up a lot or maybe your kid came in bed you didn't sleep very well. 
um, you're a little bit stressed and what's going to happen is your cortisol levels are going to spike. <clears throat> the last thing you need to do when you have that spiked cortisol level is go intense, intense, intense workouts. That's just going to spike it even more. So do something where it's more slow, controlled strength type training, do some stretching, mobility work, walking, stuff like that is going to help bring down that cortisol level, make you feel better, better for the rest of the day. Does that make sense? Sure. Interesting. Yeah. I did not know that. Mm-hmm. Hmm. So that's why like busy CEOs who are going, going, going high stress type people, the last types of workouts they need to be doing is high intensity type programs. Okay. And uh, so, yeah, and that's the, because of the cortisol. I'll I mean, keep that in mind, planning my schedule for the week. Yeah. Good yeah, job, yeah, Dustin. Yeah. I don't, I wouldn't, I, thanks I, for I wouldn't that tip. put you in that category. You don't know me. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so the last, kind of the last thing I wanted to talk about, um, is, you know, if you have a hard time doing this for yourself, let's think about the example that you're setting for your kids. And I don't, I don't want to say this to step on any toes or anything, but, um, there's obviously, a, a massive childhood obesity epidemic out there. And I think a lot of that has to do with the way they're watching our parent or we're watching our parents live. And so that's the example that you're setting for your kids. I can see that. And, um, and so, yeah, I, you know, I yeah. see that for myself, um, it, as I think back to my, my upbringing, um, fitness and exercise was not something that was commonplace seen in, in my home or around me. It just wasn't in my environment. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and so I guess, you know, it, the concept of, uh, you know, my dad never really watched football, so I don't really care about football. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, what do I do? What I what do I care about soccer? Because that was a personal interest, but um, I never got into those things because they weren't around me. Yeah. And in the same way, I never got into fitness or exercise or saw it in anything as something to be enjoyed mm -hmm. because it was never around me. Yeah. So I can see that. Yeah. There's other environmental factors that play into that. I would think in a family dynamic. Sure. Oh, I'm sure. You yeah. know, even to the extent of our activity with the church, you know, is a huge deal of, course. of how we watched our yeah. parents do it mm -hmm. or not do it. Um, yeah, exactly. And again, there's no better time to start than today to change some of those habits yeah. if they're not what you want them to be. Sure. Um, because this is all, this is, this is all stuff that we're talking about that has to do some with our how we're wired and how we're built and how we were created, but it also has to do with these are things like your flexibility that can be managed and changed mm -hmm. yeah. if you just put in some work. Um, yeah. And so if you're listening and you and you go, man, I've just I haven't been able to put this all together, and I whether you're a mother or a father or you know yeah. and and in a relationship as a couple or, yeah. you know, a single mom or a single dad, no matter what you're in, what stage of the life you're in, you can go back and say, you know what? Um, let's fix it today yeah. and let's make it how mm -hmm. you kind of want to look at the end result and work backwards. Yeah. Um, and if you do that, then there's no better time to start than now. Yeah. And it's, I think it's also important that we teach them balance because mm -hmm. <clears throat> obviously like a long time ago when we first started, we talked about the preacher's kid mentality of restricting kids and if we if we tried to restrict a kid to a very very strict diet or something like that they're obviously going to rebel they're whether it's uh, when they go to their friend's house or when they graduate and leave the house they're going to do that and so teach your kid balance um you know i we do not parent perfect we do not feed our kid perfect um but but she is seeing me exercise all the time she is seeing me eat mm -hmm. all sorts of vegetables she is watching me what i eat and she'll you can see her maybe um she, maybe she doesn't want to eat something that i cook but she's going to see me eating this vegetable and be like "Ooh, i want to try that daddy and um you know that's so important um but at the same time you know sure she's going to eat chicken nuggets that we put in the microwave or the air fryer or she's going to eat french fries and mm -hmm. cheeseburgers and so and that's fine but it's so important that she that she sees me um practicing what i'm trying to teach her and she and i'm also very intentional about how i get her to connect to the foods as in um if i i 
I strongly recommend you never use the word fat or skinny or anything like that around your kid, even if you're just talking about yourself. Like if you want your kid to not eat as much sugar, please don't say that sugar that well sugar will make you fat or it will make you gain weight or it'll make you mm-hmm. what do you, what I do is I say if you eat too much sugar that's that might make your tummy hurt or if this vegetable is really really good for you it'll make you healthy kind of talking about making sure that she has those connections with the food kind of the reinforcement yeah a little bit yeah I don't want like I told I told my wife too I was like please don't ever call yourself skinny or call yourself fat or point out your flaws in front of her because I don't want her, her to ever make those types of connections. Mm. That's a good thought. Yeah. Um, because so many people do that and, oh, yeah. and the negative, like to use your word, Dustin, the negative reinforcement that comes with those, those words and you attach it to the, to the feeling that that person is mm-hmm. sharing, then you're already setting yourself up to go down that hill. Yeah. And so that's what we're trying to avoid. So the key word is health, right? Yeah. Yeah. Health. All right. What is your overall health? Mm-hmm. And then there's so many different metrics to look at when you, yeah. when you think about health, sure. not just what you see in the mirror. Yeah. And I've seen, I've, uh, since I've been here at this job, I've probably had three, maybe four that I can think of parents that have come to me with, with an unhealthy child, uh, whether it was middle school or, or late elementary where they were obviously overweight or obese. And, um, most of the time it was a really sad scenario because they would be sitting there in front of the front desk talking to me about their, their daughter or son talking about literally where the daughter can hear them. She's gotten so fat. She's so lazy. Um, Mm. she just doesn't want to do anything and I don't even know what to do anymore. And, um, then I'll, I'll train that kid and their parents will come and sit right there on the couch and eat chicken express or eat something while they watch me work out with her. And those situations are obviously so sad. And I know that the probability of, of life cha- or uh, weight changes happening then and there are probably not going to happen or won't happen long term. Uh, but the successful cases I have had are when um, I sign up this client and their parents come and work out with us right. and they do it as a family. Yeah. Sure. They do it. Maybe yeah. I work with the kid, but they're in there doing their own thing or something like that. And that, uh, that's just crucial and, and so important that our kids see that example. Yeah. Sure. Well, and maybe there's there's some people that, that do not have those kind of stability, those stable people in their lives, yeah. or for whatever reason, they don't have them anymore in their life. Yeah. And so I, I'm thinking about the word mentor. You know, if you know somebody that's struggling, if you know somebody that you can connect with and you can do it safely, you know, and mm-hmm. within the right context, mm-hmm. um, then reach out to that family and say, hey, I'd like to go and work out with so-and-so. Yeah. Or if it's okay with them, you want to make sure and go through all the right channels and make sure you yeah. get all the right permissions um, when you're dealing with, you know, especially with children. You don't want to mess that up. But no. um, certainly with within your circle of friends and your circle of influence, you can grab on to somebody um, in the right way and say, hey, um, would you walk with me through this? Because I'm, I am I needed some accountability. I need a mentor. Yeah, sure. I need somebody to, to go with me. So, yeah, I love it. Um, and that's kind of what where we're at today. I did do some research and you guys will, will appreciate this. I hope Sweet. Right. Um, mother's day, which we just finished, uh, can be traced back to ancient pagan practices. Did you know that? Wow. Um, which kind of makes it funny because now we celebrate it. It's a big deal <laughs> on yeah. Sundays in churches. Now, um, the 1600s in the, uh, early 1600s there were christians in english england excuse me that celebrated mother's day to honor mary it's the mother of christ and then we've kind of just later expanded that to all mothers Mm -hmm. so there is some history behind mother's day itself um and the whether we should or should not celebrate it in the church is one of those things where you have to go back to um romans 14 where it says one man considers one day more sacred than another another man considers every day alike And so you think about how we set apart days to celebrate certain things. And we do Mm -hmm. this with a lot of things Mm -hmm. um, that that have their roots in pagan tradition. Yeah, sure. Um, And so we have to make sure that when we are celebrating mothers, and like you said, Joe, we can do this every day. Yeah. Um, We can celebrate mothers just like we can celebrate uh, Christ and celebrate, you know, what he's done for us Mm -hmm. in the same way. 
uh, every day, not just yeah. set it apart for one day of the, out of the week. So I thought I'd bring that in just to, as we're finishing up here. Um, but we, we are grateful for mothers and, you know, I know we, we love mothers and yeah. we are gl- grateful Joe and I, we have our wives that are mothers Yes, and we love what they do and how they do it. And so yeah. we're looking forward to Dustin, um, being able to experience this one day. Yep. Uh, and I won't go not into a whole lot, yeah. not mothering. Um, <laughs> Uh, you, don't, don't hold your breath. You make a terrible mother, Dustin, just for the record. <laughs> just, just for the record, I agree with you. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Um, but, yeah, we're looking forward to uh, being able to walk with him through that one day. Yeah. And um, Yeah, you husbands out there, if yesterday for the first time in a long time you said, hey, honey, I got the kids, go take a break, maybe you should think about doing that a little bit more often. And uh, so, yeah, do it today. Do it every day. Um, give give your wife that break where she can take time for herself, whether it's working out or going out with friends or going to get their nails done. They deserve it. And so treat them every day, not just as, not just Mother's Day. You got it. Sounds good. All right. All right. Well, thank you, guys. We love you all, mothers. Love you, mama, mommy. And I love you, Lorna. Thank y'all for everything y'all do. I'm trying to get some brownie points here. I hear that. Yeah, Yeah. good luck. (laughs) Thanks for listening to the Progressive Overload Podcast. We're honored to be a small part of your day. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or are interested in sponsoring our efforts, please feel free to reach out via email. Find us at progressiveoverloadpod at gmail.com. Don't forget to subscribe and follow our podcast so you'll be notified when our next episode drops. And as always, you can help us reach the masses by sharing our podcast with your friends and family. And then check us out on Facebook and Instagram to follow our own personal journeys and get an inside look on our day-to-day lives. Thanks again, and we'll see you soon.